you heard in Reiko's update, at least the part of the update that you were able to hear, <laughs> when Tiki definitely slid the mic over to him. Nothing works around here, I notice. It's like 50-50 that the sinks work. It's about 80-20 the mics work. Sometimes the doors don't shut. Now Tiki's mic doesn't work. Oh, jeez. Well, anyway, T, let me know when you're ready to contribute. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting to this later. So, Lundquist tonight, Jersey retired. He'll join Mess and Richter and Graves and Leach and uh, Howell and Hatfield and Jockerman and a few others. He'll be the 11th one, right? And I was thinking about this. Like, this applies to a short list of people in our town, and obviously Henrik is on this. Ewing is on this. Mattingly is on this. David Wright is on this. DeGrom is on this. Maybe Van, Van Beesbrook, LaFontaine for the Isles. You know, those players who never won a championship, but we were so emotionally invested in their plight. You know, especially somebody with injuries like a Mattingly or really rough circumstances like Ewing. Uh, it's, it's, it's all, I, I can't say that, well, maybe I can. I, say, I can't say that we revere those guys more than champions, but... In an odd way, we're almost more connected to them based on the fallibilities of their career. Yeah, you almost feel for them hey, because you championed them for so long. Hey, I'm just hoping. Hey, man, what's happening? He just shifted all uh, around yeah, the here. studio. Yeah, I was like, can I go there? No, no, there's no mic there. Can I go this no. one? No, that one's broken. There let's, he is, folks. Let's go over this Thank side. Thank you, Bob. No, I appreciate you. But no, I hear what you're saying, man. You know? These guys who, who were legends. And you 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 related to them, you championed them, and but they never actually got it done here in New York City. And Henrik Lundqvist is obviously, um, you know, the latest of those who's getting his number retired tonight. And I and I told you this last week when we were talking about him. I I've met him so many times over the years because we were contemporaries at the, and playing at the same time. I don't remember a single time seeing him and not being impressed with just how he carried himself. Mm -hmm. And I know that was, you know, just his brand, like suited, nice, everything. He looked great. But I think that's how he was on the ice and in the locker room as well. And so that's why he's so revered by Rangers fans, but also by his former teammates as well. So it's going to be a great ceremony tonight for uh, for Hendrick. So looking forward to that one. I, well. I, don't, I don't know if I could do a good show today. I, I, don't, I, don't, I feel too I, close I, I, to I don't you. like the way the, st the studio's not set up properly. <laughs> I'm too close to you right I, I don't now. like this. <laughs> you, you sat on my left on the old show for nine years. That's right. You sat on my left. Hey, come on. I think the mic is fixed. You've sat on my left every day here at the fan uh, for three-plus weeks. Now, now, now he's doing hand signals yeah. with the engineer. I think Steve, the engineer is trying to coerce you to go back to your seat. Go ahead. I don't think that mic is. I just know well, it's not right here. Yeah, play the role of Tiki. You can actually open the microphone. Open the mic. It's not, open it the mic. Open. Don't it, talk to Dove. It's, it is open. It's okay, not working. it's open. So it's not working. <laughs> That's right. All right. So, yeah, I don't like looking at you this way. It's yeah. like going from uh, it, you know the eye does? formation to a spread offense. It's just, it's foreign you to me. You know what it does? It feels like when we first like started this. our show nine years ago, this is exactly where I was sitting. Yes, and I didn't love it then either. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't like this. All right, I mean, the, they're, they're well, moving mic stands. What in the world? Well, well, this is WFAN, right? We'll figure out the studio here I mean, in a second. Geez, I'll it get, took me 20 years to get here. Mics don't work. I'll get back over there at a break. <laughs> um, you know what I was thinking about last What's night, that, BT? Tiki? So... We left the show yesterday talking about the Giants' new head coach, potential new head coach. And Brian Flores was in for an interview. Um, we speculated, man, if they love him and he knocks it out of the ballpark, then they might not let him leave. Well, Brian Flores actually did leave, and he's heading down to New Orleans to do an interview um, with the New Orleans Saints, and that could be a good fit for him as well. And the more I thought about it, I, you know, I thought Brian Flores would be great because he's, so, he's done it before, he's had success, he's going to get the culture right. But then I thought about the little things, and this is something you always talk about that I just I always discounted. Like, hey, you got to win the press conference. Hey, you got to you know tell us the truth after a game. Hey, you gotta you gotta present yourself right. I fear that Brian Flores won't present himself right because Whoa. I ask around about him. Wow, and it's not it's not a knock on him because that's just who he is. I ask around about him, and they say he's the kind of guy that's going to tell you exactly what he thinks about you to your face, whether you're the owner. Mm. which might be part of the issue down in Miami, the mm -hmm. general manager, you know, your assistant staffs, uh, the, the, the players, et cetera. From a player standpoint, that's actually kind of okay. Like you actually want to be told what you're good at, what you're not good at. Um, don't sugarcoat it for me. Don't, don't blow smoke. Just, just tell me what I need to do to be better. So from a player standpoint, that works. But from a organization and media standpoint, I just worry a little bit about mm. Brian Flores. And then I also started thinking about staff. 
What's the one thing I always talk about, BT, when I talk about new uh, a new head coach? Who can you hire? That's the first Who thing you, you bring say. It? It's what it's what Joe Judge completely whiffed at, and I, I think that you know when I think about Brian Flores' journey, it was 15 years in New England, so he knew one type of way of doing things, both as a scout and then as an assistant, and then as a linebacker coach, and then a defensive coordinator, and then three years in Miami. He knows one way of doing things and knows one type of coach, right? Whereas Brian uh, Brian Dayball was everywhere. He was in New England as a defensive assistant. Let's never forget this, a defensive assistant. Then he goes to the Jets. He's a wide receiver coach. He's a quarterback coach. And he's in Cleveland. He's in Miami. He's an offensive coordinator in Kansas City. Back to New England. He's in Alabama for a year. Wins a national championship down there with Tua Tonga Vailoa, as we talked about. Then he's at Buffalo as the OC. And we saw he turned around Josh Allen. He's got so many different experiences and so many different relationships. And what makes me like him is he has confidence, obviously, He's got a charisma mm-hmm. about himself and how he presents. He does. The good, the bad, whatever. He is, I, I believe he can hire a really good staff because of all those stops. That what if they don't on. let him bring Dorsey? That would stink because we've been champion yeah. Ken, uh, Ken Dorsey for two weeks now. But Josh Allen obviously is champion <laughs> Ken Dorsey because he wants him to stay and be the offensive coordinator if and when Dayball leaves. But then I think lastly, he's just really motivational. Like talk, having a conversation with Brian Dayball is motivational, and I think that's that's something that's aesthetic. It's not really the nuts and bolts, but I think a giant coach needs that. And so, as much as I felt like I'd be okay with Brian Flores, I tweeted this last night. I said Dayball greater than Flores. Yeah, I I just feel like Dayball is the right coach, whereas Flores. There's some question marks that I just don't know if I'm going to get answered. That by. is very, very interesting. All right, so you are you're all in on Dayball. You are tapping the brakes aggressively on Flores for the reasons you just laid out. Uh, I wonder where you guys stand. One eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. You know, a couple things that you just said. All right, so and then I want to play something for you from our conversation with Joe Shane the other day, mm-hmm. which speaks directly to what could be a blossoming power struggle between <laughs> Mr. Mara and Mr. Shane, but. First on Flores, I hear you, I hear you, but I would think that somebody who was raised in Brownsville, went to high school in, at you know Poly Prep and has has done what he's done, I, I would have to think that there would be an adaptability and a willingness yes. to, to change, not, not sacrifice who you are, because that's what got you here, but to at least, you know, maybe smooth out a few rough edges, I'm going to definitely give Flores the benefit of the doubt, and, and I'm sure you would as well. Yeah, of course. Although it is a bit of a risk, I get you. Uh, he's wound a little tight, as as was Joe Judge, and we saw how that played out. Now, the only thing that's starting to worry me here, because I think that from minute one, the Giants have handled this very well. Agreed. They read the room, and I'm not a cancel culture guy. I detest it, uh, but but – this was an element of we, we we have to get rid of Joe Judge. Like if I'm not saying that you and I led the the parade here, but no. the the outcry from Giant fans, everybody wanted Joe Judge gone based yeah. on the third and ninth sneak. And then, everybody, and then the players started saying the saying that they didn't like him anymore, and they reacted to that properly. They had to, and then. All right, so what are the Giants going to do here? Are they going to stay in their comfort zone like they always do and just, you know, bump somebody up from the inside, in-house, you know, Abrams, who I'm sure could be decent, whatever, although the cap is a mess, and that's mm-hmm. his main responsibility uh, for what I understand. So we were like, well, will the Giants really radically change their approach? And you know what? They did. Yes. They enlisted what I thought <clears throat> and, and constructed, probably a better way to frame it, a really impressive uh, extensive list of of outside candidates for the GM role. Their due diligence was on point. And when it was time to make a decision, that outside voice was given the keys, was given the steering yes. wheel. So up until now, everything has been great. But you start to hear the rumblings. Mara wants Flores. And, 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 you know, Craig was on top of this the other day. He yes. nailed it. And he could be right. He was certainly right that he got a call from from the Giants. And he might be right that he gets the job. Although I think at this point, I think Craig thinks Dable gets the job. Either way. It looks like Mara is leaning toward Flores, and Shane, obviously, is leaning with his own guy in uh, in Dayball. So we asked Joe Shane this directly. We had him on the show the other day. What happens if he wants this and you want that? And take a listen. Can you envision under any circumstance you want somebody and they want somebody else and you don't get the guy that you actually want as your first choice? 
No, I don't see that happening. You know, we've had really good conversations on, you know, the candidates that we've had through, you know, in terms of in-person interviews and we got three more and, you know, we kind of have a debrief at the end of the day, we kind of give our thoughts on, on, you know, what we thought throughout the interview, you know, whether it was practice schedules, you know, the attacking the sports performance and strength. And, you know, if we have difference of opinions, you know, we're going to go back and do more work. We're going to continue to make phone calls to people around the league, you know, on the different candidates. And, you know, I think ultimately, you know, we'll be, you know, on the same page when we make the hire, but, you know, it's going to be a collaborative effort. It's not going to be, you know, me pounding the table or John. No, no, no. And by Joe, Joe, I'm not implying that, but, but what I, would I happen would, if you didn't? Yeah. Pound the table? I mean, seriously, <laughs> like we're kind of kidding, but if you actually did take a real definitive stance on somebody and it was opposite of what ownership believed was the right move. Not to be redundant, but do you win that, for lack of a better term, battle? Do you win that one? Yeah, that would probably stink if that happened, but they own the team. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. It would stink, and I, I would, again, I think part of it is being able to negotiate. So if, if you really want something, you know, come with the facts, uh, build the story how you want it to be, and try to get to your end game. Okay, and again, that sounds good. It's a fancy way of dressing things up. You can bring all the facts and yeah. you can come to the table armed with every data point that you want. If you want Dayball and ownership win- wants Flores, then ownership's getting Flores. That's right. And that has been the recent problem for the Giants, sticking the beak where the beak shouldn't be stuck. Yeah, I, I look, and I, and I think ultimately, whichever one of these guys you get, it, it, it's going to be fine. It's going to well, be well, different. No, we, we, we don't it's know It's going to be, it's gonna be not, not fine, but it's going to be... It's gonna accepted f- by the fans. Yes, I would agree with that. Yes, it's I gonna, would agree with it's that. It's gonna feel like a good hire, not like a who the hell is Joe Judge? Yeah, the special teams coach who you know tells us everything is all right when clearly it's not. Don't believe what your lying eyes tell you. Believe what I'm telling you, right? Or Shermer who just felt lost a little bit. Not a knock on him because he's a really good offensive coordinator. Same thing with Ben McAdoo. Actually, a great offensive coordinator. Just couldn't manage being the guy in charge. And so it, I think if whoever it is, whether it's Flores or Dayball, Giants fans are going to say, that's a good hire. Is it hitting out of the park? You're not going to know that until they actually win or lose some games. 877-337-6666. I got to tell you, I feel like I'm off the hook a little bit. As a Jets fan, you know, we keep hearing, well, Rich Cotide, you guys have hired some bums, too. You guys have hired some stiffs, yeah, man. Yeah, we've, we've, we've caught up. Ray Handley. <laughs> I should, up. Not bums. Is, I, I shouldn't say bums. You but know what I mean. I know guys what who mean. didn't work. Yeah. You know, I'm smiling I mean, when I say bums. That's, you know. Two and done is a bum, dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you a bum. How about damn bums? All right, let's get Sonny and Malvern. And Sonny's on the fan, Tiki and Tierney. Sonny. Hey, guys. For the record, I, I liked Joe Judge. I really did. I thought under the right circumstances, he would have made a really great head coach, and I uh, hopefully he gets another chance. That's just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I think there's just too many variables between, you know, the, the, the quarterback situation, offensive line, receivers being out half the year. I, I think he was, you know, a raw deal, to tell you the truth. Um, anyway, going forward, uh, Tiki, I agree with you 100%. Flores is too much instability in Miami there. Too many rumblings about, you know, communication, getting along with the quarterback. In New York, especially now, you need stability. And you can't have a coach coming in here that doesn't get along with a quarterback. And you need your number one priority to get along with Daniel Jones and to, to build him into a winner. Yeah. So I, I go for Dave Ball here, guys. And I think, you know, I think it's just right. I think it fits with the, you know, with the GM and them having their relationship, which I think is an important thing. So you go GM to coach with a great relationship and the coach to the quarterback with a great relationship. I think you'll be a winner for the New York Giants. All right, Sonny, good job weighing in. How about White Plains? We're going to hop up there now. And uh, John, something's wrong with the phone, too. What, the mics don't work? The, the phones don't What's going on here? Here we go. John's in White Plains. Oh, now it doesn't work. Okay. Coming down 3, 2, and 1. Uh, Sal is in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's definitely going to work. What up, up, Sal? Sal? How are you today? Yo, good morning, boys. Sal. How are you? Hey, What's always up? excited to talk with you, boys. Hey, Thanks, bro. Matt, we knew McAdoo was in trouble when he showed up wearing Andy Reid's suit. <laughs> <laughs> he was out right away. From no, wait, wait, Sal. Right, was that, knew- Sal, was that a suit or was that a uh, a tent from the old store in King's Plaza? <laughs> exactly, Remember Herman's? Man. Remember Herman's? Hey, hey, he went to Allmark for that, man. He went to the tent maker. He didn't go to the tailor. That's okay, though. No. And, and listen, I'm tired of hearing about Flores. He can't get along. It's not romper room, man. It's men <laughs> and football and do your job and stop complaining. That's all. You still pick up your paycheck. Nobody's here to say he talked bad to me. Now I can't work with this guy. I get day ball. I get the relationship with GM and coach. But I think a lot of fans are going to be under the impression Dayball's going to bring 
Allen with him, and it's going to be a great offense. He don't have that. And well, fans are going to get on this guy immediately, man. Go get the defense. Go put the giant DNA on it. Do what you got to do, brothers. Sal, hey, Sal, check it in. Thank hey, we you, got, Sal. Got one, for, one for Flores, one for Dayball. <laughs> this thing really is not working. This thing is starting to drive me a little nuts. Did, like, an army of mice come in overnight? Like, did they chew wires? Why, like... <laughs> Why is nothing working? It is insane. It it's is. crazy. I'm hitting every nothing's nothing's working today. Uh, let's get. Let's see if this works. Caleb's in Astoria. Caleb is on the fan. What's up, Caleb? Hey man, how's it going? Good. So I just got a quick question for you guys. So yeah. if you guys, so you're saying that Dave Ball and Flores are both good hires, which I don't necessarily disagree with you at all. Yeah. But my question is, what's the difference between those two guys who are Proven, you know, Dave Ball's a proven offensive coordinator. Flores is a proven head coach. Yep. Between somebody like Shermer and McAdoo, who are also proven guys. Yeah. So let like me. Why? Let, let me, why should we be more excited than? I'll, those I'll, guys? I'll give you my perspective because I, I it's, it's a very good question. So I remember this when Jim Fossil, just to go backwards a little bit, when Jim Fossil lost both of his coordinators. So Sean Payton left, or well, actually was kind of pushed out because he took the play calling duties from him in two thousand and two. Um, and then John Fox left to go take the head coaching job at the Carolina Panthers. It was it was a struggle for Coach Fossil to find the next great coordinator or the next really good and up-and-coming coordinator or the, Rick's, the next good and up-and-coming defensive coordinator. And, in fact, they, so they promoted our DB coach, Johnny Lynn, interiorly instead of going and finding that next coach. And so – I think part of that was just Jim Jim not having the relationships mm-hmm. outside of what he always knew to hire or or say, hey, you want to come work for me type of thing. And so with Ben McAdoo, I don't I know he didn't have those relationships because you looked at his staff and it was like, who are these who are these guys? Like you're hanging you you're you're keeping some. You like you, it just wasn't a cohesive staff that he put together. The same thing can be said for Shermer um, because he came from a, a system um, in. Uh, in, in Minnesota, Minnesota yeah. where nobody was leaving with him. It's, not, it's like the, uh, what's the movie with Tom Cruise where he's like, who's coming with me? You know what I mean? Oh, Jerry McGuire. <laughs> Jerry McGuire. Like, does hey, the edict. Yeah, Jeremy, yeah. who's coming with me? Yeah. And it's like, nobody. And nobody, the goldfish. <laughs> no, nobody's coming with me. And you. the receptionist. That's right. I know for a fact this happened with Joe Judge last yeah. year because you look at his staff, and BT and I went through this in our first week, 60% of it was all college coaches. They had no NFL experience. And this before they fired Joe Judge, That's by the right. way. I mean, we the, illuminated that. The only really competent coach was was, was Jason Garrett, right, who had yeah, been the head coach. As a, as a coordinator, offensively, that's, right. that's even debatable. But, right. But, that offense was Yeah, they were, they were limited. Antiquated. But I think we saw when Freddie Kitchens took over. Freddie boy. <laughs> how hard it was for Jason Garrett. But the point is, when you when you hire a new head coach, the most important thing from my perspective is being able to build a great staff. Brian Dayball has been in a lot of places, and I mentioned them all. New England, obviously, twice, defense and offensive uh, assistant. The Jets in Cleveland, Miami, Kansas City. Bama. Bama, where he was, and, and, and obviously with Buffalo. Like I just feel like his relationships and the personality that he has mm-hmm. is conducive to bringing in people that are going to want to roll with him. Pool's bigger. Right? The and, pool's bigger. And, uh, they, they're gonna the wanna, lake is bigger. They're going to look at the Giants and say, man, there is actually some skill position talent on that team. Uh-huh. You know what? They, they got some good players on defense. I, I want to roll with Brian Dayball because I believe in him. He's opportunistic. He's motivational. Look at what he did with Josh Allen, who everybody had doubts on. Um, and then when you look at Brian Flores, it's like, all right, he fired three coordinators uh, in, in three years. And had a bad relationship with a quarterback who was taking top ten. Yeah, okay. and, the, and the owner and the general and the manager. I just – a little it bit just worries for the me media. a little bit. And so, for me, it's all about who you can hire as a staff. i got to like you as a head coach, but tell me who you're hiring as a staff. 877-337-6666. Good stuff there. We'll get more calls, obviously, coming up just out of the shoot. 